My favourite food is pepperoni. Lasagna? Pizza. My favourite food is steak. Spaghetti? Oreos. My favourite food is cupcake. Don't like celery. I really don't like strawberries. Onions. Mushrooms. I don't really like cauliflower, it's just it's disgusting, I guess. Fussy eating is a relatively normal thing among children. Um, I, I often think of it a bit like wetting the bed. All children wet the bed up to a certain age and fussy eating is no different in the sense that it's um, one of the tasks of uh, developmental learning is to learn to manage food in your mouth, to learn to process textures, and um, that can often manifest as uh, fussy eating. Food is a vehicle that um, children use to kind of explore their environment and to explore ideas around independence and control. Um, so uh, because it's one of the ways that they interact with their caregivers, um, it's, uh, it's also a way of um, expressing frustration frustration and anger and, and distrust and so on. So you can also get periods of um, temporary fussy eating when a child is upset or angry. So it can be an expression of emotion um, in that sense and also of kind of learning to, um, to control the self and others. So when we start to call something an eating disorder is when um, those uh, feelings and eating behaviour have got tangled up with each other to the extent that it's starting to influence um, somebody's physical and emotional well-being. So what happens in anorexia nervosa is somebody becomes very intensely fearful of, um, of being fat um, of, of, um, and, and of weight gain and um, become quite determined to lose weight in a quite a deliberate way. So it's not a, it's not a loss of appetite, it's a determined losing of weight. Um, and obviously that can become quite dangerous. So the, the reason that people might know most about anorexia nervosa is that, that unfortunately in some situations that can become life-threatening um, and require a young person to need to be in hospital. In bulimia nervosa, there are a lot of this, uh, similar thoughts and feelings um, when, uh, to when a young person has anorexia nervosa. Uh, the difference is that, uh, that there's a, a tendency in people with bulimia nervosa to overeat. And sometimes that can be exacerbated by emotions. So if somebody's feeling particularly upset or angry, that may lead them to, um, to overeat more. Um, uh, what happens in bulimia nervosa is that 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 uh, there comes a time when those feel that overeating um, might be associated with feeling guilty, feeling bad, um, feeling ashamed of your eating behaviour. Um, and that might lead a young person to decide that they, they need to eliminate that food. And that can include forms of purging, such as making yourself sick, but it might also include things like starving yourself um, uh, to compensate for the fact that you haven't eaten or um, forcing yourself to do excessive amounts of exercise uh, to compensate for the fact that you feel that you've overeaten. Um, and those feelings of shame and guilt are, um, are what drives that vicious cycle between um, overeating and then purging behaviours. Binge eating disorder is what it sounds like. It's binge eating behaviour, but without the purging and the compensatory behaviours. It sort of follows on from bulimia nervosa um, in that it, uh, again, describes behaviour in which a young person, uh, a child, has, has lost control over their eating behaviour. ARFID, or Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, is different from the others in that it isn't associated with um, thoughts and feelings about body weight and shape in the same sort of way. The three sort of main types that we talk about are um, avoidance of food for sensory reasons. So um, it, this would be when fussy eating um, uh, does start to veer into becoming uh, harmful. So if somebody is so fussy that they are unable to eat in a normal social situation or if they're una unable to eat enough of the types of foods that they need to for normal brain development or for normal physical development, that's when we would say something has become, when fussy eating Eating has become a type of ARFID. Um, and when I say sensory reasons, I mean things like the texture, the smell, the taste, the colour, the packaging of food. 
might be what's making it difficult for a child uh, or young person to eat that particular type of food. Um, the other types of aphid are, uh, um, that are, have been described um, are a phobic type of um, uh, food avoidance. So, for example, if somebody suddenly develops a fear of being sick as a result of eating or a fear of choking, and that might be triggered by some experience that they've had, so they may have some sort of traumatic event, um, that would be, and then they stop eating because they are um, become fearful of eating because of the consequences. Um, but those consequences are not about the impact on their weight and their shape. That's another type of aphid. Um, and then the third broad type are children who aren't really aware of their appetite, don't really get the signals and cues uh, to eat, and so they become malnourished as a result of um, um, a, a lack of a, what we call interoceptive awareness and knowing you're being able to read your bodily cues. Most people think that change in weight is the one of the key signs of uh, somebody developing an eating disorder, but actually that's quite a late sign, um, uh, um, and it because it often takes a little while for noticeable weight loss. And so the first thing a parent might notice is either uh, a child beginning to be self-conscious about their body in terms of the way they dress, avoiding mirrors, not wanting to get changed in public, um, those sorts of things. And of course, it's difficult to disentangle that from the normal self-consciousness that adolescents develop about their bodies as they change through puberty. In terms of changes in eating behaviour, um, uh, with anorexia nervosa, what you might start to see is the kind of institution of some some rules about eating um, and rigidity about eating so only being prepared to eat certain types of foods at certain times in certain ways um, prepared in certain ways with certain people and particularly avoidance of um, wanting to wanting to isolate um, and cut off um, from social interaction around eating as it progresses you might start to notice things like hiding food um, or uh, in the case of bulimia nervosa, you might see, you might find that um, large amounts of food have gone missing, um, but very much secretively. Um, that, so uh, you might then find that somebody's been purging on a regular basis. So if somebody has been, uh, for example, eating uh, happily at a mealtime, but then always disappears to the loo afterwards, um, that might raise your suspicions, particularly if it's associated um, with uh, negative self-talk about um, the self and the body. And changes in mood, changes in irritability, uh, irritability check things that are a sign that things aren't okay emotionally, wanting to withdraw um, from interactions, wanting to withdraw from your peer group, um, those are the sorts of things that you might think that might make you think that something is not right emotionally. And if it's coupled with changes in uh, eating behavior and how somebody is behaving around their body weight and shape, those are the sorts of things that might think might make you think is this person starting to develop an eating disorder. As a parent, one of the things you can most do is help people think about their bodies in terms of what their bodies can do rather than what their bodies look like.